My name is Chevelle Cole. I'm 36 years old. I was sexually abused and physically abused. So at the time, my aunt that I didn't know at the time, I thought she was my mother. She had kidnapped me. I didn't find that out till I was like 15 years old. Under her care, I didn't know a lot of things at that age. Like everything was hidden from me. So by me being raised under her roof, it was terrible. Me and my auntie never had communication in the house. Like it was always her telling me to do this, do that. Clean out the dog mess, clean out the, her grandkids. When she started having grandkids, all her grandkids got put on me. I'm a kid taking care of babies, I don't know you know, what to do with them. If I don't clean up, she was, she'll get real angry. I get a whooping for it. So I'm like, why am I getting a whooping? Because I'm a kid, you got older kids here who I thought was my brothers and sisters. They are my cousins. So it's like, have them to help. I'm a little kid, what am I supposed to do? So being raised under my auntie care, it was terrible. It was times that I didn't understand. I was like, I don't understand why I'm getting abused like this. I was just a kid. One time she beat me so badly, she called the school and told them I was severely sick. I had two black guys and whips all on my arms, my legs. And I remember catching the school bus. And I remember this day, cause I have a best friend who I always look forward to going to school. So I say to myself, like, I want to go to school. Education is important to me. I remember the school bus pulling up and I'm looking out the window, I cry. I cry real tears. I'm like, oh my God, my friend is looking out the window on the bus and the bus just drove off. When I come downstairs, I try to like get some water. And that's when my auntie was like, put some witch hate on your eye because the school said you can't miss too many days. But remind you, she have to have a doctor's note. If I'm severely sick, supposed to have a doctor's note. So she didn't take me to the doctor or nothing because she knew for a fact if she took me to the doctor, they seen no bruises and she would have got in trouble. So she did let me go to school for like a week until everything cleared up, especially the black guy, because it was terrible. And I remember her kids, they used to walk around and see this, like they couldn't say nothing because she threatened them. Don't say nothing to nobody. As I was getting older and older and older, that's when the me get molested started. I remember this, I was seven years old. One of her sons, who is deceased, he came off as real nice that day. We always used to play the video games because it was always the girls' room and the boys' room. So me going in the boys' room, I always play video games with them or whatever. But this particular day, I remember just playing video game and how the room is set up. It's a closet in a room. And when my cousin came in, it was like, he was sweet talking me, like joking around. And then I remember him like closing the room door and opening the closet door. And he was like, come inside the closet. And I'm like, okay, me being a kid, I'm not thinking none of it. He takes me in the closet. He would go back outside the room, like, cause he know for a fact, his mom will never come upstairs. She only come upstairs when it's time to go to bed. Cause mom was downstairs the whole time, like she always do. So stay upstairs, like inside a closet. He comes back inside the room in a closet. He made me turn around, squat down. And I remember <laughs> like just shaking. I like, I was scared. Cause I'm like, I didn't know to ask like, what are you doing? He just told me don't say nothing. And that's when he like pulled my clothes down, told me bend and that's when he molested me. I was crying and it hurt it real bad. And while he was forcing, I was just like shaking and he was like, be still, don't move. So I'm telling like myself like, okay, I'm scared. I'ma just do what he tell me to do cause I don't know what's gonna happen. So when he forcefully kept doing it, it didn't stop. I was crying, it hurt it. When he was done, he tried to hurry up and wipe me and, you know, put me on the bed like as if nothing had happened. So he started hearing people moving around in the house. So he ended up like leaving out the room. I left out the room and went in me and my cousin, the girl room, which I thought was my sister, but I went in the other room and I just sat there scared. I closed my door, the room door, and I just turned on the TV and then I just, it just didn't seem right. So me sitting there for so long, I didn't even hear my auntie calling and yelling at me because 
I'm just somewhere else right now. My mind is like scared because I'm thinking like, I don't know what to do. When she called me downstairs, she was like, oh, come help wash the dishes and stuff. And my cousin who molested me, he gave me a look like, you know, a frightened look like, you better not say that this. So I'm like real scared at this moment. So I'm like, okay, let me wash the dishes. I don't want to get a whooping. Let me just do what they asked me to do. I slept that night or whatever. And it was like, I'll say a few days later, it happened again. And this time my auntie wasn't there. I think she had went somewhere with her husband. I remember all the other kids was there. So it's like a basement where, you know, one of her sons used to sleep at and his brother only came upstairs to eat or he'll play the video games upstairs where I got molested at. And then after that, he's back down in the basement. So I remember my cousin who molested me came back inside the road, like looking around and then he saw me. So I'm like real fighting at this moment. So I'm trying to like find something to, you know, distract myself or distract him. Cause I didn't know what was going on, but I saw it in his face, like it's gonna happen again. So he was like, mama ain't here. So you come in here while I'm in so I can watch you. So in my head, I'm like thinking that's a lie. She would have left the, old, the other brother that was in the basement to watch me. So at this point I'm refusing to go with him in the other room. So it's like, he just yanked me off my bed, out my room, and it made me go back inside the closet. So now this time, he got both of my hands or whatever, like holding them together, got my mouth, his hands covering my mouth, like not to say nothing. And forcefully, cause he's, he was so tall, forcefully pulled my clothes down again and molested me again. So at this point, I, just started to like try to bite his hand, get away. So when his older brother was like, you can hear him talking because they like to joke in the house a lot. So he hears him, so he stops. So I run out of my room, I close my little door and I hear the other brother coming up the stairs. Like, okay, let's play the game. Let's play the video game and stuff like that. I cried to the point where I hid under the bed until I heard my auntie come back home. I found out years later, this is my cousin. It hurt it because, you know, her other son, when I was eight at the time, he always used to tell me, oh, anybody mess with you at school? I'm your big brother, I will protect you. And I'm thinking like, okay, I could go to him and he could protect me and I could talk to him or whatever. Cause it's like, I know some people say kids probably don't know everything but I didn't know at the time how to express it. Like what happened to me? What his brother did to me? So me seeing him that day, I'm like, okay, you know, the other brother, I could talk to him. Out of all four of her sons, two of them did it to me. It was just so much going on during those years. And so when I turned eight years old, I'm thinking like, okay, the other brother left the house finally, who molested me, but the other three brothers, it was like, okay, I feel safe, which I thought I did. I thought I felt safe at the time. I remember like turning eight. I remember like at that time, her kids was coming back and forth inside the house. My auntie started going out with her fiance and they always used to just let the kids do whatever they wanted to. Me feeling safe that the other brother wasn't in the house. I'm like, okay, the other brother not here. Her daughter was there. So I felt a little bit comfortable. But the other brother, who is her baby boy, my auntie's baby boy, her last son, he was the person that I said, you know, he always comes to me and said, I'm your protector. If you need me, let me know. This particular night, I remember my auntie, her fiance went to a concert. That's when some of her kids was like in the basement. They threw a party. It was just one of those days, like I didn't have to worry. So as usual, I'm upstairs. It's bad time. I remember hearing my cousin, which is my auntie's youngest son. I hear him come up the stairs and I saw him come in my room. I'm like, okay, that's my brother, my other brother. He might be looking for something. I'm just laying there and I just felt him get in the bed with me. He was like, you know, touching my arm, asking me, am I asleep? So I'm just sitting there and I'm like, okay, I don't know what's gonna happen. So that's when he decided like touch my leg 
and stuff like that. And I tried to like get up. And then it's like he forcefully like laid me back down, made me face my body towards the wall. So it's like I'm cramped up towards the wall while he pulled down my underwear. And that's when he molested me. So I'm like, can you please stop? He was a little more aggressive than his other brother. It was more him shut the up, don't say nothing. So after he did that, he just wiped me off, left the room, went back downstairs where the party was. So I just went in the bathroom, hurry up, close the door, locked it. So I stayed in the bathroom for so long, I ran myself a bath. So all I kept doing was like, you know, crying and crying and crying. Like, I just can't wait to get out this house. I couldn't wait. So when my auntie and her husband, I mean, her fiance came back home, I was just looking at her and I, I was like, no, I'm just finna say something. Remember boy downstairs telling her like, you know, they did something to me. Like, can you see? She looked at me like, what? She's like, go to bed, go to bed. It's too late, why is you up? I'm so scared. So when I saw her cousin, them, they all looking at me like, what's going on? Now that's being her baby boy. She let him say it, whatever he wanted to say. He, did she just tell you to go upstairs? Get out her face. You need to listen. Stop being hard here. Go to bed. And that frightened me. So he stopped me from telling his mom and everybody in the house what he just did to me. So I remember the next day, I went downstairs. I gave the names to, you know, who her sons who did it. And she just looked at me and was like, you better not go to school tell nobody because that's a lie. And if you go to school, make up the last, this is what's going to happen to you. And they gonna send you away. In my head, I didn't care. If they send me away, it lost it's not what you guys. But then she kind of, you know, that track was like, you better not say nothing, this and that, or they're gonna send you back here. Cause they ain't nobody gonna believe you. So she took it upon herself, calling other family members. I remember hearing these conversations, she telling them like, the girl is crazy and she trying to, you know, do stuff to herself. I'm here her to tell somebody on the phone list. And I'm just like, is she serious? I'm a little kid and it's like, I'm growing to understand some stuff, but not everything, but I knew that was wrong. As I was getting older and older and older, we had moved from out the house where I got molested at. We ended up moving to this other house. Around this side, I'm like about 11. My body started to change. I started to become, you know, a young lady. So it was like, now my menstrual started and I'm becoming aware of my body, but I remember my school had told my auntie like, okay, she gotta get a physical, gotta get checkups now. My auntie refused, she refused it. So it took for one of my teachers to do an urgency, like, okay, she has to go to the doctor to get checked out. So I remember when I went to the doctor, they did my regular checkup and stuff like that. And I remember the doctor like looking at know everything, making sure I'm okay. So the doctor noticed like something was unusual, even though it's been like two years gone now, I'm 11 years old. So they trying to figure out something not right. They asked, are you sexual active? I didn't know what that mean at the time, but they explained, I said, no. My auntie, she gave me a look, like a strange look, like you better not say nothing. And I just like, didn't say nothing. This around the time we at the new house, both of her sons was into some type of, you know, whatever they was into outside. They both got locked up. So in my case, I'm thinking like, okay, maybe they got locked up for what they did to me, but they didn't. They got locked up for something else. So when they was gone for eight years, I felt relief. Like, okay, I ain't got to worry about them, you know, touching me anymore. Cause her baby boy, he used to beat on me a lot too. Her other two sons who never did nothing to me, her oldest son, he left the house a long time ago. So I remember when he used to come over, it's like he knew, he knew, but he couldn't say nothing because it was his mother. So I was 15 years old. That's when everything started coming out. And I remember, well, my auntie who used to come on a regular when I was younger, she reached out to my auntie like, okay, bring the kids. I'm having a baby shower. Let her see her cousins. So that was like the only cousins that I connected with when it comes to girls. So I remember we just going out there to Riverdale and that's when my cousin, she's, she's very silly sometimes, but when she's being silly, she's speaking 
stuff that she not supposed to say. Because I remember she kept speaking about my biological mother. She said, oh, you look just like she's calling my biological mom and hey, And I'm like, who is that? She said, oh, she looks just like her. And I'm wondering, like, what is she talking about? And I remember seeing two ladies come through the front door with some kids. The first thing I saw was my biological mother. I didn't know who she was, but it was like a connection. It was a different connection from what me and my auntie had who abused me because we never communicate. But when I see my biological mother come through that door, it was like a connection right there. And I just sat there and looked at her. She looked at me. It was like she was so excited. And then my face just, you know, it glowed up. And I'm like, this lady looked like she could be my mother. And she like gave me a signal like, come, 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 come outside. Went outside. And I instantly felt it. I'm like, you're my mom. She said, yes, I've been looking for you for years. She was like, do you know who I am? I'm saying, you're my mom. I'm looking at you. You shaking. I'm shaking. Oh my God. She said, did you know my sister kidnapped you from me? She said, she took you since she was a baby. I'm like, how old was I? She was like, I was some months old. She said, all she knew was my grandmother, who is you know, was deceased, told the old, her oldest daughter, which who kidnapped me, to like, okay, we're going to tell the court or the police, like, she's not taking care of this baby. They got DCFS involved to a point where it's like, they said my mom left me in the bed and built it. That's what my auntie told me, who abused me. It's like, my mom left me in the bed and built it. So when my mom talking to me outside, she like, I've been looking for you. My sister act like she didn't know where you was. We standing out there having a conversation. That's when my auntie came out. She yelling, get away, don't, you don't know what you doing. That ain't your mama. It was like my biological mama and her sister going at it. She yelling at her on the porch, telling her like, she abandoned you. She left you in the bed in the building. So my biological mom and my other auntie is looking at they sister like, now why are you sitting here lying? My auntie's looking at their sister's like, you gonna sit here and continue to lie to this child and tell her that you her mother, you kidnapped her. My auntie who abused me, she gates me, forced me in the car. So I'm call the police, you stay right here, I'm gonna get her locked up. I was like, no, don't lock up my mother. So me finding out my boss, my mother, I'm talking to her like, mom, I don't want you to get locked up, just leave. She was like, She's finna go to jail. She said, you want to come with me? And I'm like, yes. So I'm telling her, like, I want to go with you. So my auntie, we get in the car. We drive. She yelling at me, cursing at me, calling me, you dumb B. You better not believe like this. She left you in the band your building. But I felt that she was lying. So I'm telling her, like, you know what? I don't care. I know my biological mom, man. That's where I want to go to. So soon we get home, that's when... My auntie called, and then that's when my auntie who abused me declined it. But when she called again, so we had like the regular house phones, and she's telling her, y'all wrong, y'all wrong, y'all wrong, don't call me no more. And then I guess they uh, told my biological mom where she stayed. Like, okay. Said she want to play this role. Your baby's in Chicago on the south side. They told my biological mom what school I was at, what high school I was at. So I remember my biological mom coming to my high school and she gave me a phone number. She said, call me. She said, just call me when you get out of school. So I remember going home that day, calling my biological mom off the phone. And that's when the full story came out. She said, my mother, which is my grandmother and her oldest daughter, which kidnapped me, they had supposed to get her court papers and never gave it to her. They waited to the time the court date came and if my mom didn't show up, my biological mom didn't show up, then yes, that gave me up. She said, I was still your mom. She said, I came home and you was gone. It took another sister to tell her the truth. Like, you know, mom and our older sister took the baby. They said you wasn't taking care of the baby. And my mom was like, I left to go to work. I left to go do this to get my baby formula, pampers and stuff. And me hearing my biological mom telling me that her sisters treated her badly. She was like, she was getting abused by her own mother. So I was like, so this is a, a family curse thing. Like y'all got a habit of being on kids. Me finding out who my biological mom was, it affected me deeply because I was hurting. Because I was like, a family secret like they you don't keep. And I wish my auntie would have ate it about the right way and say, okay, my sons, they wrong. I'm wrong. 
let me take accountability. That baby didn't deserve that. Because I feel like even if my mama didn't take care of me, my biological mom, they don't give you a right to do that. So me finding out who my biological mom was, I just felt the need to just express it to my biological mom. Like, you know what? It's not your fault. Because they wouldn't put the blame on her and say, oh, this is her fault. But it wasn't my biological mom's fault that I got molested three times. It wasn't my biological mom's fault that she didn't know this is what her sister and her mother was going to do to her. But she also didn't know behind closed door that her oldest child was going through this. So it not just affected me, it affected her deeply because she was like, I wish I was there to protect you. Sadly, my biological mom passed in 2009, but I got the closure that I needed. She told me the truth. She said, I didn't give you up. I love you. She said, I wouldn't even let that have happened to you. I was like, I tried, mom. I tried to tell the school. I got threatened by my auntie not to say nothing. I got threatened by her sons. If I say something, it was going to hurt me worse. So all of that affected me to where I felt damaged mentally. So with my mom, my logical mom, leaving me so wisdom because I didn't know she was going to leave this early. Thankfully, she left me with some words and said, don't ever let nobody put fear in you. She said, you take my words and you stay away from this family. I said, oh, you ain't got to worry about me, mom. I'm staying away. I'm staying away. I wasn't a troubled kid. I wasn't. So I'm like, you know what? I'm thankful. God reunited me and my biological mom. She opened me up and said, no, you don't silence from nobody. You don't let nobody put fear in you. She told me, love yourself. And when I told my biological mom about me being molested, she said it happened to her before. And she felt where I was coming from. And she said, don't ever be silent about this. But she said, when you speak, you speak it for everybody who been through what you been through.